Hi Sleep Bus family, it's Simon here from Sleep Bus and uh, hello to our Canberra supporters for the Canberra Sleep Bus which is uh, right behind me here. Apparently there's been a bit going on in the world and it has affected us but uh, we're soldiering on as best we can. So So with uh, the global pandemic, it has affected Sleep Bus, unfortunately. Uh, we had one of our guys off for two weeks in lockdown after a, a trip, uh, and that left me a man down. And then when uh, lockdowns really kicked in, uh, I lost my other guy as well, who uh, had to catch public transport to come to work and didn't feel comfortable to do that. Now I've got my, uh, my counterpart back from uh, lockdown for the 14 days. Uh, it's a family member, so we live together anyway, so my son, so uh, that means we've got two hands now, so it makes life a little bit easier for me. So it's meant that I've had to soldier on by myself uh, for the last sort of pretty much a month, uh, doing things that only one person can do and uh, holding out for when uh, I have a second person. There's been a lot of businesses that have been put out, uh, a lot of our suppliers uh, are struggling or not operating at all, which makes it very difficult for, to get, for us to get what we need. Uh, and particularly with, uh, I guess, what relates to the Canberra Pink Sleep Bus, which is our sign riders. So they're doing it tough at the moment. They don't have the jobs that they used to have. So we've pulled forward doing our sign riding so that we can help them out. Uh, and so that's mean for the last couple of weeks, it's been prepping the bus behind me ready for paint and then so the sign guys can come in and do their thing um, so that we can give them some money and keep them going and look after them. Uh, it's meant that we uh, had to stop doing work on the inside uh, and work on the outside. There's a lot to do to prep a bus for painting and for sign writing uh, and especially when it's uh, just one person uh, it takes a little bit longer but uh, it'll be exciting to get the sign writing on in the next two weeks and uh, I look forward to showing you that update soon. So let me give you a quick walk around. So look, not a lot of exciting things to show, but you can see how we've been patching up things and getting out little rust spots, and you need to do that, not only for paint and for sign writing, but also for the roadworthy parts of it and all that sort of thing, uh, inspections and those sorts of things. So um, yeah, so we've been patching up things that need to be patched up and covering things that need to be covered, uh, but it's pretty much, although it looks like the Mad Max bus at the moment, it's pretty much ready for paint, which is very exciting, and uh, I'll give you that video uh, I'll probably get to that uh, late this week, early next week. So get that painting done and then the sign riders can come in and do their thing. So what I was thinking I might do as a bit of a, I guess, tease is probably the wrong word, but to show you what uh, we've built, I've got the pink sleep bus behind me there, which is now completed. Uh, and we're working with the health department and our own sort of teams to figure out how we can get this operational during this time. Uh, so that's proving to be a little bit uh, tricky with uh, volunteers and social distancing and all those sorts of things but you know these are challenges that we have to work through like everybody else does in business and in charity so uh, we'll work through that and do the best we, we can but uh, I thought I might give you a tour of this one seeing this is pretty much what you'll be getting. So here we are we're inside what is the uh, caretakers cabin so the volunteers cabin and this is where they can stay all night. It's also obviously the driving area in the front of the bus as well. Um, but I'll give you a quick tour of what's in here and how it all works. So behind me here we have uh, the console, I suppose. So the operation center of, of this particular sleep bus. So we have all our dials and switches and all those sorts of things for doors, for lights, for USB chargers. And it controls all the battery and the power and everything for the whole system, including the climate control. So we have our uh, security monitor here. So this is just going through a process at the moment. And uh, so that can be moved to wherever we need it. Um, but that displays all the video cameras around the outside of the bus uh, and under the bus as well to the pet pods so that we can keep an eye on things from inside uh, the console, um, inside the caretaker's cabin area here as well. Uh, that monitoring system is also monitored by our third party uh, security company as well so they keep an eye on things for us as well they do regular patrols and those sorts of things so that's sort of how that was I'll give you a quick look at some of the switches there for those who are interested in those sorts of things our climate control so there's two of those two air conditioning and heating systems throughout the bus and it's all ducted into each pod and then we have our uh, light switches we have our door switches 
uh, pods, so that's all for the um, for the lights and, and speakers and all those sorts of things inside a pod. Uh, USB, so for charging people's phones and, and those sorts of things. And then all our TVs on and off as well. We have our intercom system throughout the bus as well, so we can keep our guests informed of what's happening, if there is anything happening. Uh, and so that's a way for us to communicate with them. And then we have all our switches down here. So we have all our door, door lights. And so we can operate those door lights individually or all at once. And the same for the doors. So we can open them all at once or individually as the case requires. I will open said doors and switch on said lights right now. So here we have a typical single sleep pod. So as you can see, it's got its Sokoza mattress, Tontine pillows, and obviously we'll have sheets and dunas on there as well. Uh, up the back there, you can see the lights on there. So that's the console for our guests. So it has USB chargers, has reading lights, has the intercom there as well. Uh, so everything they'd need to keep themselves comfortable and occupied. And obviously we have TV as well. So they're also on swivels. So that DVD channel that you see that's up on the screen at the moment uh, is usually our services channel. So it's a loop of ads of all the services available to somebody within a two kilometer radius of where the bus is parked. And obviously we have another bunk up the top here. Same sort of thing as all the same USB lights, reading, intercom and TV and a lovely single bed Ecosa mattress. Underneath we have a toilet for emergency during the night if you need to go and ducting and everything for the air conditioning but it's quite a good space quite a good size much larger than what our original prototype was which is fantastic uh, and so that's what a single pod looks like in the back of this particular bus we have a double pod for a, maybe a family or something like that uh, a mum and, and a couple of kids or even more so here we are with the double pod so this is a massive space or the family pod as we've sort of coined it uh, so this is two bunk double beds or almost queen size beds if you like so massive space so mum and a couple of kids can share this space and feel comfortable all together uh, and obviously they still have the TVs they still have the consoles with all the USBs and that's for top and for bottom and all the doors that open up on the side of the bus there as you can see with their lights on they also act as our weather shield our veranda if you like so hot, cold, wet, uh, these doors can help protect us while we're onboarding people, which is fantastic. So that's become a, a really unique feature of what this bus can do and how the new design uh, is certainly improved on from the original sleep bus. So really pleased with how this has worked out. So we have these flat pack cages, so they come in all different shapes and sizes. They have covers that go over the top as well. And there's ducted heating and air conditioning in this space under here as well. So we can fit, uh, look, up to nine, nine different size cages and pets uh, underneath there. So, um, so it's a great space and we've, and we've got this space. So we can certainly utilize it, which we'll have for the Canberra Pink Sleep Bus also. And with our doors, as I said before, we've got all these different switches here so we can do all or individual. So if I wanna shut pod nine, I just pull this one down and pad nine door can close and we can leave all the other ones open. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed that tour. Uh, not too much to show on the camera bus at the moment. A lot of that behind the scenes work happening. And obviously, like I said, we're trying to hype it, help out our sign rider. So let's get that outside done. There's a fair bit of work to do in there. 
uh, especially for one person, but uh, got another person on deck now and we will soldier on. So that leads us to the question of, will the Canberra Sleep Bus be ready by winter? At this stage, the way everything's sort of going in the world and what's happening here and how that's affecting Sleep Bus, uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, I'm working towards that goal. My goal was to not focus on what's happening outside and out of my control, so with borders and how do we get volunteers involved uh, given the current situation with social distancing and those sorts of things. But let's just focus on finishing the bus, getting that done, and then we can tackle these things and these challenges as they come up, like every business and every company is doing at the moment. So my goal is still very much into getting this bus finished uh, in time for winter. And so I will soldier on with that and we'll keep you updated as we go. Uh, if we don't make it by the start of winter, I, I doubt that we'd be far away, but at this stage, that is still my goal. Um, I think we're, what, six, five, six weeks away from then, so uh, a lot can happen as we've seen in the world uh, in that period of time. So uh, I'll keep going, we'll see what happens, and I'll keep you updated on the progress as it happens. Thanks so much for your time, thanks so much for your support. Take care, stay safe. Bye-bye.